this preview brought to you by Harness Racing Victoria. A big night of harness racing coming up this evening at Melton. They've got 10 races on the program. Their first event goes at 5.33 local time. Jason Bonington from Harness Racing Victoria is joining me to have a look at the program. Hello to you, Jace. Looking forward to the racing tonight at Melton. Yeah, g'day, Greg. No big feature races, I guess, at Tabcorp Park tonight like we've had over the last few weeks, but the HBV Blossom Lady, some of Victoria's very best mares lining up and a terrific 10-race program with uh, plenty of competitive events right across the night. As I mentioned, the first event goes at 5.33. Let's have a look at the predictor in the first, and it's number nine, Sal's Mo. Sal's Mo now with the Dean Braun team and has won its past three. Eight times sealed, 12 conflict of interest, and number three, stormed out. Nine, eight, 12 and three in the first. Yeah, I'm not too far off the sky predictor here. I think it's a two-horse race. I love these heat and to final affairs. You really get a great look at the form lines and the two winners of their respective heats here in stormed out and Salzmo really do look the one. Stormed out used to be a bit of a one-dimensional sort of a character, but seems to have come back in better form, can do a bit of work in its races, gets that good front line draw. I think he can bully his way to the front and prove pretty tough to beat. Salzmo will be making a mid-race move. He's become a killing machine for new trainer Dean Braun. He'll be sitting parked at some stage and won't be letting Stormed out get away with an easy victory. Time Steel's a talented type, but was crushed by Stormed out in his heat of this race. Gets the inside back line draw a little bit awkward, so he gets thrown in for a place, but an unlikely winner. And Village Peach was well beaten by Salzmo in her heat. Did a bit of work there, has the poor draw, but most of the big guns are drawn poorly here in the first race in the program. Let's have a look at race number two, and this is a C1 final, and the predictor looks this way. Holly's Miss Molly for Robert Walters is on top of number four, Modern Hitch. We've got number 12, Our Summer Wind, and number three, My Leashy. One, four, 12 and three. The predictor, race two. Jase. Yeah, another heat into final event here, Hazy. So uh, we could be kicking the night off with some serious success. I'm with the predictor here, Holly's Miss Molly. It was a clever drive by Robert Walters. Uh, led early and then took the trail behind Walkie Talkie and then out sprinted that guy in the lane. He can either try and she can either try and hold the early lead here or uh, do something similar to last time. She's definitely the one to beat from the pole marking draw. Our summer win was disappointing last start, but he worked too hard there. He's a real sit sprinter and from the second line draw, if he gets a cart into things, he'll be dangerous late. Walkie talk we mentioned he made that uh, dazzling mid race move to take up the running before getting bloused by Holly's Miss Molly. He's a big hope from wide on the front line. We'll be going forward early, I would have thought. And Valentino Rustler comes out of the other heat for this race. Uh, really had a new lease on life recently and uh, even from the poor draw can figure with the right run into things. Let's have a look at race number three now. And this is for the uh, Metropolitan Maiden Trotters over the 2240. And a Gluteus Major is the top pick from the predictor. Daryl Douglas to take the drive. Three, Abbott's Hall. Number six, the Pearl of Paris. And number nine, Just Call Me Earl. Four, three, six and nine from the predictor race three. You will never, ever in your life see a tougher square gating race. And this, we have some tough ones in Victoria at this level, but this is uh, a real dartboard job. I've gone with Monsieur de Ville. Always been a big fan of this horse. First up from a break here. Won two trials at Shepparton recently. And as I say, always had plenty of ability. Can go forward early and is versatile enough to win, even if he goes back. So Monsieur de Ville, the class factor. And then, uh, as I say, a little bit of a raffle. I'm going to do good. It's a good beginner from the mobile start, should be able to put himself in the race and did split El Parco and tendered on five back in a similar race. So has claims Abbott's Hall's the sit sprint specialist, will get back, but we're running on hard if the tempo is appropriate. And the Pearl of Paris has been doing most of its racing from the standing start. But back to the mobile, does have good form and can figure with the right run into things as well. What about race number four? It's the first leg of the quaddy and it's not an easy one. It's over the 17.20. The predictor has come up with kick it to Chris. Karen Manning trains and drives. Number five, Belisario, is the second pick. Chris Alford back in the sulky. 11 good time, Jasper, and six give us a grin. Two, five, 11 and six from the predictor, Jason. Race four. I'm with the predictor here, Hazy. Uh, another very tricky race. Tough way to start off the court, but we might be able to get some value. I am with kick it to Chris. I think he, uh, he's really had a new lease on life recently. One he's passed to as a sort of one pace warrior. Used to be a bit of a sit sprinter, but now likes to get out and running and has been doing a great job. As I mentioned, he won at Melton, then at Stall. So in great form. Uh, he's on top, even though I don't think you'll find the front early on. Doesn't have great gate speed. Give us a grin's really improved under the... Uh, 
under the threat of uh, hard metropolitan racing. He's really thrived having to go back to Melton week in, week out. He can go forward early or back and be dangerous either way, number six. Good time Jasper was bloused by the Tasmanian Hugo Play, who's been sold to Victorian interest. Hugo Play really going places, so for good time Jasper to run the silver medal behind him last week. He's a very good horse and can also get into things if there's enough speed on early. And run for us, number one, another one to include in quaddies, along with Shandon Village, who'll be one of my best roughies for the program. All right, let's have a look at the next race now. And this is for the M1 to M2 paces over the 2240. Now, the predictor has come up with one of the runners off the back row, number 10, Katari Rowland for Jeff Webster and Emmett Brosnan, coming off that third behind cut for an ace last time out. Seven lo lovable larrikin is the second pick. We've got 11 cut for an ace and number one, Mark Dennis. 10, 7, 11 and 1 in the second leg of the quaddy, Jace. This is becoming repetitive. It'll get a little bit easier later in the program, but another very, very tough race here. I've gone with number 11, cut for an ace. Uh, this bloke was otherworldly, winning the, uh, the Claiming Masters final last start. Was in the Alan Tubbs camp then, was claimed by Jeff Webster. So resumes here for Jeff Webster, but Alan Tubbs to Jeff Webster, both very good trainers, so he shouldn't lose anything. Can do work in his races, which is crucial from the second line draw. Lovable Larrick in... Uh, Probably should have won five or six races last preparation. A real sit sprint specialist can fly at the end of his races. First up here. Hasn't had the trial, but we know how much talent he has, so he can be dangerous. Our Arlington was disappointing last start, but gets a nice draw here. Should follow the likely leader, Mark Dennis, out. And if he gets a nice cut into the sprint lane, will be finishing off hard. And Katari Roll on the top tip from the predictor. A stable mate now of cut for an ace. Also went through that claiming master series and does have plenty of talent on his day. Should be included in your quads. What about race number six, the third leg of the quaddy? It's a Pacers handicap. The predictors come up with number 10, Mr Sheedy. And uh, Mr Sheedy, trained by Emma Stewart, Michael Stanley to do the driving. Seven astronaut who's been in super form of late has won two of its last four. Nine hostile grins and number three, narrow operative. Ten, seven, nine and three, race six. Yeah, I'm very similar to the predictor again here, Hazy. I'm going with Astronaut. I just think he's had that one good run a couple of starts back here at Tabcourt Park from the Strands. Only the one start from the Strands, but he did begin well and he ran a massive race. Probably should have gone very close to winning on that occasion. Uh, has since won a race and then come second after taking the trail behind Mr Sheedy at Cranbourne. I just think he's the foolproof one in another very difficult race. The best horse in the race, I think most people would agree, is Mr Sheedy. Uh, he could be going somewhere special. He's just got to find that killer instinct. He was great at Cranbourne last time, had a big improvement on his first two runs. This preparation, if he can hold that kind of form, he'll be in the finish too. Mack and out uh, came from nearly last uh, to run third in a very similar race to this a few starts back, then won at Melton and uh, knocked up probably the class rise was a bit too much in the Melton plate last start. But back to this sort of race, the 20 metres won't make things easy, but he is low flying at the moment. And Sterling Point comes out of different form lines, but wasn't too far away from them in the Gamalite, a much better standing start affair. So uh, dropping in class, and if he gets the right run into the race, he can also figure in the finish. Another very tough race, though. Race number seven is the Blossom Lady. Now, this race will go at 21 minutes to nine local time. Shake It Mama is the on-top pick from the predictor. Number 10, La Machine. Number nine, Miss Precious Mac. And number six, Better Give It, who's got really good form behind Five Star Anvil. I know, Jace, you're keen on Five Star Anvil at Geelong in the Geelong Rocket tomorrow night. So, no doubt you're giving a Better Give It a bit of a tick in tonight's race. Yeah, you've read me like a book, no doubt about it, Hazy. I'm, uh, I'm finally with one that I'm very confident on for the program here, and it is uh, Better Give It. Been in terrific form of late, of course. You mentioned the run behind Five Star Amber, but if we go back to uh, September 13, here is the race, uh, and it is the Cinderella Stakes. Better Give It there. You can see three wide without cover joining in quickly. This is how she races best. On her back is Broadway's best, who... Along with Victorian Mary, the year blue collar tiger pie, they're still the benchmark mares uh, in this state. So to go so very close to knocking over Broadway's best here just tells you what a class mare she is. I think she can bully her way to the front here, particularly if one of her stable mates in Tara Top Lady holds the early lead. So I'm very, very keen here. Best bet on the program, race seven, number six. Better give it and a great uh, anchor for the last leg of the quaddy. As I said, if she rolls forward and finds the front, she'll be winning. Shake it, Mama. Uh, had two runs back this preparation, won her first start back, but was even more impressive running second last time. She gets that inside backline draw, but can sprint lethally late if she gets the, uh, gets the gaps. 
Tara Top Lady, so the trifecta to Emma Stewart for mine, gets the pole marking draw. As mentioned, if she holds up early, she'll have options and be dangerous from there. And Born Again Sassy, who's uh, just low flying, been a big improver for Team Douglas, has the second line draw. It'll make things tough, but if she can get the chair without uh, using up too much petrol, can probably threaten the Emma Stewart trio. What about race number eight? It's for the Trotters. It's over the short trip of the 17.20. They all start. Number six, Tender Don. Should appreciate the fact that we see no elegant image this week. One, Brylan Crescent. Number five, Pretty Little Angel Eyes. And seven, Maori's Pocket. Six, one, five and seven. Jason, race eight. Yeah, when you talk about lovable horses, I'm pretty sure most people who've been following Tender Don this preparation uh, would tell you how lovable he is. Only gets beaten, apparently, at the moment when, uh, when Elegant Image is in the race. If Elegant Image isn't there and he's not this week, he's been too good for the second tier of square gators in Victoria, and he's, uh, he's just a great horse. He's a big fellow. He can work very hard into his races and keep running consistent sectionals. I think he'll be too good. He does have a little threat here in the form of Brylan Crescent, who's run a 157 mile here, winning the Breed for Speed Silver Series final. So she's a specialist sprinter and should lead them around for a fair while. Pretty little angel eyes. Well, her nemesis is Tender Don, unfortunately, just like Tender Don's is Elegant Image. So she'll run another massive race, but it will be hard for her to turn the tables on Tender Don. And brief glance, the four-year-old uh, Vic Bread Super Series winner obviously has that win over Elegant Image from 16 or 17 months ago. Did win three starts back, but hasn't been as good in his past two and would probably have to improve to beat Tender Don and co here. Race number nine will go at 9.39 local time. It's the claimer, and the predictor has number six, Catch Your Breath, on top. Dean Braun trains. Chris Alford will do the driving. Smudge Bromax in as a $50,000 claimer. Has been competing in the claimers of late, but did go 153.2, winning a race towards the end of August. Uh, number five, that's Mr Ali, and number eight, Wash Me Pocket. Six, seven, five and eight from the predictor race nine. Jason? I'm absolutely mustard keen here. I'm very keen on better given and tender Don, but I'm even keener probably at a shorter quote on Catch Your Breath. I really think he uh, he's going to be super difficult to beat. He's had no luck at his past couple of starts at Claiming Masters final and his most recent start at Tabcourt Park last week. But here we're looking at the replay from his Claiming Masters heat win, which is a very, very similar race to tonight. He drew barrier six on this occasion, just like tonight. Speared to the lead and absolutely led his rivals a merry dance. You can see Spudge Bromack... Uh, battling on very bravely for second there. And I can just see a replica scenario here. They were drawn six and seven uh, in this particular race, the claiming Masters heat, and they are again tonight. I think you'll see a replica result here. Catch your breath, a special number six. Number seven, Smudge Bromack, the only danger. If you want some value for trifectas and first fours, Mega Sam should have won two starts back and is going better than his figure form line might suggest. And number five, that's Mr Ali. Always goes his best these days when smothered up and uh, gets that cold run. He should get that tonight in the small field and he'll be finishing off stoutly at the uh, business end of the race. Let's have a look at race number 10. Another one for the Trotters. And the predictor has come up with number 11, Maidstone Miss. This mare races extremely well when Chris Alpha does the driving. Um, I think the last two drives, he's driven her. She's won and run second. And then uh, Rod Petroff and uh, Gavin Lang have been used as well with uh, Chris being injured. And uh, the mare hasn't performed as well. One will atone, five Monica My Dear and three packed up early around out the predictor. 11, 1, 5 and 3, Jason, in the last. Yeah, Hazy, look, I don't think there's a lot between 1 and 11 because of the draws. I've gone with number one as a value option here, Will Atone, an eight-year-old who uh, has only had the five starts but really shown plenty already. Only won the one race today but probably should have won more. It'll go very close from the pole marking draw, particularly if it can hold the early lead. Maidstone Miss has uh, been outstanding recently. It was a good form black booker from its last run when it made a mistake and almost rattled home to win after losing 30 or 40 metres in the run. Quality mare can probably win better races than this. The draw's the only issue over the short course. Alabama Smokin's a smart trotter who's only had two runs back from a break, improved from its first run back to its second run back, has plenty of ability and uh, definitely one you should be throwing in your wider exotic wages. And Monica My Dear, who keeps going so close to winning a race of this nature over the short course at Melton, but may have to settle for second, third or fourth again tonight with such a classy field. So 1, 11, 6 and 5 in that last event. That time of the preview where we need a best bet. You're keen on a few, but have you settled on the best one? Yeah, I think if you want one at a price, I think Tender Don and Catch Your Breath will both be red figures. If you want one at uh, Flip of the Corn or better, race 7, number 6, better giver. John Calder in the card goes forward early. Too big, too strong for her rivals and HBV Blossom Lady. 
And without doubt, my best ruffy, I really implore punters to have something to win and plenty of the place on race four, number 10, Shandon Village. Wide open race, but this horse is low flying for Jason Fino. And if they go very hard early, as I expect they might, he will be finishing off with intent late. All right, so they are the best bets on the program. Have you got a quaddy for us? I have got a quaddy, and it's going to be very, very wide for the first three legs, but uh, we'll tighten it up very late in that last leg. One, two, three, five, six, ten, and 11. That's the Shandon Village race. Hopefully we can get in with a bit of value there. One, seven, eight, ten, and 11 in the second leg. I've tipped cut for an ace, but it's a wide open race. Three, seven, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve in the third leg. So again, we're looking for a little bit of value there, and then just finish off with six and eight. Better give it, as I've mentioned, definitely uh, my best bet. And maybe you want to have one quaddy with it, one out. But shake it, mum is the obvious risk number eight. If it gets the uh, gets the gaps late, a hundred bucks will get you twenty two point seven two percent hazy. Jason, enjoy Melton tonight, and look forward to catching up with you again very soon. Terrific, Hazy. I will. There he is, Jason Bonington from Harness Racing Victoria. Looking forward to the program at Melton tonight. You'll see all 10 races right here on Sky Racing. This preview brought to you by Harness Racing Victoria.